Civilization, as we know it, has been kindled by one advancement, fire, the capstone that set us apart from the animal kingdom. However, this fire serves as a double-edged sword. It nurtures contemporary life, but plagues the environment's future. Fossil fuels, the primary source of pollution that damages our ecosystem. They have been used for hundreds of years and have slowly been raising the Earth's temperature with its gas emissions. Mass transit is better for the environment compared to private transportation because it utilizes fuel more efficiently with more passengers. With transit being used over 9 billion times in the United States per year, it is impertinent for its transition into sustainability to minimize gas emissions. Our planet's future is dependent on mankind's decisions. Fossil fuels are unsustainable for Earth's well-being, but there are solutions. One of the primary pollutants injuring the Earth are gas emissions. These gas emissions come from burning fossil fuels in order to be used for electricity, heat, and transportation. Introducing sustainable energy, a cleaner option that can serve the same purpose as its foul counterpart. Renewable sources such as solar, hydro, and wind energy can produce this desired power. These sources of energy produce significant less gas emissions that go into the environment. Up next is a clip of Senator Chris Dodd in which he discusses upcoming reformations of the metro system. 860,000 square feet of office space, retail space, uh, as well as a hotel and condominiums, creating 3,000 <coughs> construction jobs and more importantly, almost 3,000 permanent jobs. Powered by fuel cells, solar power, and other energy efficient technologies, and it's all contingent on an access to mass transit. Some other pros of sustainable transit would be that it causes less CO2 emissions, lessens smog in the air, and uses resources smarter. However, some cons that need to be considered are the effect on the economy, as it is costly and the possibility of negatively affecting other industries. Sustainable transit can be seldom found in the modern era. From trains to buses, gas has been the go-to fuel source for decades. However, there is an incline in this effort. The effects of global warming have been recognized to be impacting our environment significantly. At the 2002 World Summit on Sustainable Development in Johannesburg, they developed a plan to advance sustainable development with a document called the Johannesburg Plan of Implementation. Just this year, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law was passed as a way to provide over $108 billion for sustainable transit development. Darren Lovis talks about how the country has been undergoing big budget changes over the past few years, and it is only planned to get better. For this interview, could you please introduce yourself to the people watching? Uh, there we go. That's better. I'm, I'm Darren Lovas, and I'm the Chief of Environment and Sustainable Transportation here at the Maryland Department of Transportation in the Secretary's office. Right now, implementing laws that were passed in, in just in the past few years. So in 2021, we had this big national infrastructure law that was passed that has a ton of new money to build uh, to build rail lines and to build more charging stations for vehicles and to build bike paths. Also in 2022, Maryland passed the Climate Solutions Now Act, which is actually the most ambitious uh, uh, and best, I guess you'd say, uh, climate law, state climate law in the country. So we have a lot to be proud of. And we're going to be implementing all those laws, Christian, in the coming year, right? So we'll probably see new laws. And frankly, uh, our, our bigger challenge is implementing or making happen what we're already required to do because of laws passed just in the past few years. There are different factors contributing to a person's choice to use sustainable transit, but it is key to view both perspectives. The two most viable reasons against transit are availability and safety. Evidently, transit systems are not apparent in rural places, which disallows a proportion of the population to utilize transit. However, safety is often underestimated in public transportation due to myths of high crime rate. In reality, it is many times safer for one to take public transportation rather than going in a private transport. Well, first of all, it, it's uh, um, uh, when you invest in these things, um, it takes money, right? Uh, so when you build a new rail line, for example, uh, it can be expensive. So that's one challenge, is making sure that there's you know, a budget to, to pay for these things. As said by Darren Lovis, there are other bigger issues concerning finance. However, with budgets slowly getting bigger, 
In the next 20 years, this issue might dwindle. The environment is contingent on man's proactivity in advancing sustainability. The world as a whole is already undergoing the development of sustainability, not just for transportation. It is a choice that people determine every day whether they should or should not take the metro, bus, or drive to their destination on their own. Therefore, the government should most definitely find ways to encourage and evolve sustainable transit as it heavily benefits the world as a whole.